Now we're going to take a look at some common conventions in ERP research so you understand what you're looking at when you see published data. First, let's consider the most common system for naming electrode locations, called the International 1020 System. It's called the 1020 system because it involves measuring the head and placing electrodes every 10 or 20 percent of the distance between key landmarks. This system was developed in 1958, before it was possible to record from large numbers of electrodes, so now we might place the electrodes at 5 or 10 percent distances. Each electrode name begins with one or two letters indicating the general region of the brain, such as FP for frontal pole or O for occipital. These letters can be combined for in-between regions, such as PO for electrodes near the parietal occipital border. The letters are followed by a number. We use odd numbers for the left hemisphere, even numbers for the right hemisphere, and a Z to indicate zero for the midline. The numbers get larger as we move farther away from the midline. For example, as we move away from the midline toward the left side over frontal cortex, we have electrodes F1, F3, F5, F7, and F9. Now that you know the general system, you don't need to memorize every individual electrode name. If I ask you where electrode FC2 is located, you should be able to figure out that it's near the border of the frontal and central areas, in the right hemisphere, and close to the midline. Some EEG recording systems don't use the 1020 system. Instead, they use a geodesic configuration that guarantees an equal spacing between each adjacent pair of electrodes. These layouts use idiosyncratic numbering systems, and a publication will typically say something like, these are data from electrode 27 which is near the P2 location in the International 1020 system. Now let's talk about conventions for plotting ERP data. You might have noticed that the ERP waveforms so far have shown only a single electrode, even though most labs typically record from between 20 and 128 electrodes. If we showed the data from every electrode site, you'd end up with something like this, where it's nearly impossible to see what's going on. We record from many electrode sites simultaneously, but the waveforms at nearby sites are typically quite similar, so there's usually no point in showing all of the electrode sites in a journal article. Instead, we typically show the data from a single electrode site, or maybe a few sites, and then we show scalp maps to show the distribution of voltage at a given moment in time. Note that these maps use interpolation to show voltage over the entire scalp, even though we only have measures at the discrete electrode sites. So, you can see gradual variations in shading between the electrode sites, which reflect interpolated voltage values. That just makes the maps easier to look at, especially if you're used to looking at fMRI data. Another thing you should be aware of is that ERP papers don't usually show single-subject ERP waveforms. Again, this is largely to avoid overwhelming the reader with a million squiggly lines. Here we have the average ERPs from only eight subjects in a single condition, and it's already a lot of information. Instead, we usually take the single-subject average ERP waveforms and average them together into what we call a grand average waveform. So when you see ERP waveforms in a paper like this, you're looking at grand averages across the subjects. However, the statistical analysis is done using the single-subject waveforms, not the grand averages. For example, this study measured the mean amplitude in the N170 time range for each individual subject's average ERP waveform in each condition and then put those single subject amplitude values into a simple analysis of variance. Now I'd like to briefly discuss an oddity about how ERPs are sometimes plotted. Here's a figure from the first edition of my ERP book, and here's the same figure from the second edition. Do you see the difference? In the first edition, all the figures were plotted with negative upward. That's how I was trained to do it back in the 1980s. This odd convention was a result of the nature of the hardware used by early researchers to record EEG and ERPs. These researchers didn't have computers, and it would have been very difficult for them to plot positive upward given the hardware they were using. But this tradition persisted long after computers made it trivial to plot the data with positive upward, like the other 99% of scientists did. I eventually saw the light, so in the second edition of my book, all the figures were plotted with positive upward. The bottom line is that plotting negative up is an outdated convention, but it's still pretty common, so you need to make sure you look at the polarity indicators in the plots of ERP waveforms.